Um, I don't know where we would be without moms. I don't know where I would be without my mom. And I'm going to try not to go all there because I don't want to cry. And I know she don't want to cry. She don't like to be uh, embarrassed or brought attention to. But I love my mother, and I'm thankful that God has allowed her to still be here with us. And, um, and she's such a huge, huge part of my life. Um, she doesn't think she does much, but she does more than she realizes. And just her presence sometimes, and just her kind words and her words of encouragement, and above all, her prayers that she prays, that I know that she prays for me and my husband and all of her children and her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Those things are not taken for granted, Mama. Thank you. I love you. I honor you today. You are definitely a woman to be honored. When I was thinking about mothers and how to best honor our mothers, I tried to go to the scripture to see what does the word of God have to say about a mother. And we all know the famous chapter in Proverbs. Her value is far above rubies or pearls. The heart of her husband trusts in her confidently. And he relies on and believes in her securely so that he has no lack of honest gain or need of dishonest spoil. She comforts, she encourages, and does him only good as long as their life is within that there is life within her. She seeks out wool and flax and works with willing hands to develop it. She is like the merchant ships loaded with foodstuffs. She brings her household's food from a far country. She rises while it is yet night and gets spiritual food for her household and then assigns her maids their task. She considers a new field before she buys or accepts it, expanding prudently and not courting neglect or her present duties by assuming other duties. With her savings of time and strength, she plants fruitful vines in her vineyard. She girds herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given task, and makes her arms strong and firm. She tastes and sees that her grain or her gain from work with and for God is good. Her lamp goes not out, but it burns on continually through the night of trouble, privation, or sorrow, warning away fear, doubt, and distrust. She lays her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She opens her hand to the poor, yes, she reaches out her filled hands to the needy, whether in body, mind, or spirit. She fears not the snow of her family, for all her household are doubly clothed in scarlet. She makes for herself coverlets, cushions, and rugs of tapestry. Her clothing is of linen, pure and fine, and of purple, such as that of which the clothing of priests and the hollowed clothes of the temple were made. Her husband is known in the city gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen garments and leads others to buy them. She delivers to the merchants girdles or sashes that free one up from service or for service. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and her position is strong and secure. She rejoices over the future, the latter day or time to come, knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it. She opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness, giving counsel and instruction. She looks well on how things go in her household, and the bread of idleness gossip, discontent, and self-pity she will not eat. 
Her children rise up and call her blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied. And her husband boasts of and praises her, saying, Many daughters have gone virtuously, nobly, and well, with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness, but you excel them all. Charm and grace are deceptive, and beauty is vain because it is not lasting. But a woman who reverently and worshipfully fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates of the city. That is a beautiful, beautiful, powerful description of what a mother is and should be. I want to encourage all of our ladies, whether you're a mother or not, that scripture has a lot for us to take in and it gives us instruction on the kind of woman that would be honored, that would be revered, that would be respected, a woman that takes care of her household, a woman that takes care of her children, her husband, and also has time to take care of others and the needs of others. I want to be a virtuous woman. I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. And I charge the women of 2020, don't listen to the noise of our world today that give a different description of what a woman should be. I want to give honor to God in my life. And serving my husband, serving my children is not demeaning to me. It is a godly honor. It is a godly privilege. And if ever there's a day that women in our world need to find that place again, it's today. Because that kind of woman is a woman that is respected. That kind of woman is a woman that is honored. That kind of woman is a woman that would be admired and would be looked up to. And that's the kind of women we should be today. Amen? Amen. When you came in, if you are a mother, you should have received a gift. If you did not receive one, could you raise your hand? Awesome. Good job, Sister Maggie. <laughs> so today, we honor all of our mothers. We thank God for you. You're doing an awesome job. Even on the days when you feel like you're not, you are. You're killing it. Keep getting up. Keep doing it. Because there is a reward that's awaiting you. So at this time, I would like not for our mothers to stand. But if you are not a mother, would you stand? If you're not a mother, stand. <laughs> if you are not a mother, whether you are male or female, <laughs> please stand. At this time, I would like for you to give all of our mothers an ovation right now. Could you do that? Come on! I know there's some women. There we go. That's what I was waiting for, Brother Brian. We've got a few whistlers out there. We honor you. Happy Mother's Day. And now we're getting ready to kick off and have service. Anybody ready? Church today. Maddie's ready. Praise the Lord. Can you put your hands together?
Hallelujah. Somebody might need a sampler or a tester or something. Amen. Oh, my goodness. It's gonna, we're going to give you a chance, an opportunity to give unto the Lord. We have our offering basket out here in the front. Uh, it's a custom. Uh, it's still P-O-L-C. Uh, we do still have customs, right? Amen. I know we haven't. We, <laughs> we're going to know how to act when we get back in that building. Amen. But I'm okay if we have to stay out here too. I'm okay with that. Amen. Uh, probably our neighbors, our, uh, everybody that's been driving along and the bicyclists that came by this morning, uh, we happen to be testing out the mics and we, they got an invitation to come back. Amen. While we were testing the mic, we just went ahead and invited them to come to church. Hallelujah. Amen. While they went that way and when they come back this way, they got to come. Amen, amen, amen. If you'll just bow your heads. Heavenly Father, today, we pray over this offering. God, I want to thank you for the faithfulness of these wonderful and precious saints of God. Lord, for week in and week out, the Lord Jesus, we've been unable to come and meet together. But Lord, they have been very faithful in their giving, their tithes and offering, the building fund, the missions. God, all the things that we have made a commitment, God, to give to you. I pray your blessings back upon them. Would you, God, bless this offer today? And we give you the praise and honor for it. In Jesus' name, bring it from Just bring your offering. Hallelujah. Amen. However you want to bring it. Amen. God bless you. Let's worship the Lord.
somebody needs to just love on the Lord for just a moment. Hallelujah. Come on, let your praise out. Hallelujah. There's no reason for us to go any further without entertaining the presence of the Lord that I feel that is swept into here today. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We didn't get dressed up and come sit underneath the tent just so that we could gather, but we come to entertain the presence of the Lord here today. Would you understand that we really are not worth it, but he is worth it. Hallelujah. You cannot do things good enough. You cannot get good enough so that you can become worthy. That's why Jesus had to come and die on the cross because he understood our frailty and our humanity. But God so loved us that he gave us about you, but I, he's worthy to be praised. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you felt what just swept into this place a few moments ago. Yeah, there is definitely the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, amen, this, we understand that it's Mother's Day and our mothers, we do give you great honor. My wife did such an incredible job. We honor the mothers that are here today. We honor you. We thank you. And here's a great revelation. You would not be here if you did not have a mother. I just figured I'd throw that great revelation out there. Mothers are still very important. One writer penned the words that the hands that rock the cradle rules the world. We see that through all of our our sports heroes, guys who made it big in the sports arena, or whenever the camera comes on them because they just made a touchdown or they made a three-point shot, the very first thing that we find them saying is, hi, Mom. Something about mothers, amen, that we are very grateful, amen, to have mothers. So have your mother today. It's a great honor Amen. to have your mother with you. But it is also a great honor, amen, to live on the memory of your mother. Amen. I'm very grateful, amen, that I've had a lot of people in my life. Um, I heard Gabby say this morning, she told Aurora, what are you going to do for your mom on Mother's Day because you got a bunch of ladies you call mother? she had about 10 or 12 that she had to come up with a car or something. Amen. Uh, I do feel that God has given me a word today and if it's uh, if you will allow me today I want to take my time and just preach the word of the Lord because I don't I don't want to miss with what the Spirit wants to do and say today. I understand that we have a great time of fellowship and fun afterwards. I don't want to miss this moment that God has given to us. Amen? Amen. We find that in the book of Isaiah, the theme that Isaiah wrote in Scripture, his writings throughout the book of Isaiah, was his unwavering trust in God's promises, for he understood that what God said in his word, he was capable of fulfilling every promise. Aren't you grateful that God is a promise-keeping God? That He is and is able to do what He said that He would do. Amen. To all our guests that are here today, thank you so much. If you are here with your mother, you're not a, a member of the POC Church body, we honor you. Thank you so much for being here today. Amen. As I look out over the crowd, I see a lot of faces. I see your moms today. Amen. And thank you. Thank you for coming and being part of this wonderful day. Amen. Heavenly Father, I humbly ask, would you anoint God these lips of clay? Would you take God the cold from off of the altar and touch God these unclean lips so that it would be able to speak what does say of the word and the spirit of God to the church today? We're here to honor our mothers, and we're thankful, Lord. Would you just smile a little more upon them today? 
Oh, God, wrap your arms around my sweet mothers and just love on them but just a little longer today. In Jesus, and amen. You can be seated. So we find that the theme that we find throughout the book of of Isaiah, we find that that theme is, amen, his trust. Isaiah was a prophet. He was a man that was able to look beyond his day and his time. He even looked beyond, amen, the generations that come all the way down to even our generation, begin to prophesy and say some things that, amen, that we need to listen to and take heart Amen. The writings that Isaiah spoke to us. Isaiah speaks to Judah in this particular set of scriptures. I want to share with you today. In Judah, we understand Judah means praise. So he's speaking to the tribe of Judah, but he's also speaking beyond just Judah, but he's also speaking, amen, what Judah represents, and it's called praise. To trust. He's telling Judah, you got to learn how to trust in that God is in complete and total control. Can I get an amen? God is in complete control of your life and of what is going on in our world today. Even though that they are facing overwhelming odds with those that are coming against them. This was a very trying time for the children of Israel but Isaiah the prophet is trying to get them to look beyond the current circumstance and to go back to a promise that was given to them way before the events begin to unfold. And can I just tell you today that even ourselves, we have got to come to the place to where that we have, to, we have got to settle some things in our mind, in our hearts, that we cannot allow this present moment of this present hour to begin to allow our faith to waver. But we must trust in the unmovable, unshakable, and undeniable faithfulness of God. Amen. 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 We find that there was four nations that began to revolt against them, but they were to trust in God's deliverance as they have done prior to. As I preached to you last time, you have to make sure you look back over your shoulder and find some victories to be able to encourage you for a present battle. If you have been in some battles in the past, then you know God is forevermore with us even through the heat of the battle. So he understood as he's trying to encourage them helping them to understand that God is the deliverer and outside of him there is no hope. He is the hope not only in this moment, but he's in the hope in the time to come. And so he's encouraging them and he's telling them, don't join yourself with other nations. Don't join yourself with other people because God does not want to share his glory with anything or anyone else. God even says in his word that I am, he said, behold, I am a jealous God. God was trying through the prophet to tell them, amen, the children of Israel, don't go join yourself or think that you need to go and, and get other people to come join with you to fight the enemy that you're looking at. God has a way of wanting you to understand you need to decrease so that he can increase. We find the circumstances in life where that even um, Gideon, when he went to go fight, we find that God began to tell him, you've got too many. But in Gideon's eyes, he was already outnumbered. Can I tell you today, you've got to get to the point where you can see through God's eyes in what God has planned for your life. Trusting God is something that we all must find ourselves that we are doing. Like the children of Israel, God is trying to tell us that he is strong enough and that he is big enough and that he can bring us out of any captivity 
that you might find yourself in. I don't know who in the world, amen, that I'm preaching here today, but I'm going to take my time because I feel the presence of the Lord, and He has something to say to somebody here today, amen. And I, I just want to tell you, listen, I come to honor the mothers that are here today, but the message God has given to me, amen, and, and He birthed this four days ago in my spirit, and He told me, He said, honor the mothers, but take time to honor the mother which I have established on the church on the earth, and that's the church. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to start seeing mama begin to give some birth. Amen. Back into the children of God. Give us children of God. My title for you today is simply When Zion Gives Birth. When Zion gives birth. God is trying to get us to understand that he can bring us out of every circumstance and out of every captivity and he will bring you through every battle that you will ever fight. We must not fear what may come against us, his church, because the church belongs to him. Amen. I come to tell you today and I tried my very best to this writing of this message is to try to get us a mental visual picture. Amen. Though the church, amen, is not the building behind me. The church is not a structure that is made by the design of man's hands. But the church is the spiritual birthplace of where uh, humanity meets heavenly. Where God's spirit comes to live inside of earthly vessels. So I want to encourage you today. There is no mountain high enough that he cannot climb to get to you. There is no river wide enough that he cannot cross. There is no strong army strong enough that it can stand against him. There is no authority that is higher than his authority. God has all power and he has all authority. Could it be that God was trying to tell you and I, amen, that if we would just look in the set of scripture that I'm about to tell you, he says that praise literally is good enough. Could it be that God is trying to tell the children of Israel, Judah, that if you will just continue to praise, your praise is good enough to bring forth a victory in your life? Amen. Amen. I've had a lot of people that have been discouraged, has been distracted because of our quarantine and COVID-19. But I believe that there is something that God is trying to birth back into the church that is not only found inside of a structure of a building, but it is a continuous, unstoppable, and unshakable place where praise will continually come out of the mouth of God's people. Hallelujah. Could it be, amen, that God is trying to say that praise is good enough. When others is trying to silence your praise, tells you you cannot come collectively and you cannot come into a building and you can begin to praise collectively. I might not be able to praise with you collectively like we have done in the past, but I can still have a praise down inside of my heart and my soul and my spirit that's going to give way to something if you refuse to allow the world and the dictation of this world to tell you you cannot praise. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not in my notes, but I know that if the post is... It's true, and you got to watch what you say because there's a lot of things that's floating out there that's false media. God help us on that. Hallelujah. But it says there in Kansas that they have to now, every Christian has to now, uh, they have to sign up or they have to register with the state. I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters, today that they may be able to control where we assemble them, but they can never control the presence and the flow of the anointing of God that he has birthed inside of his church 
and of his people. You have got to get your head lifted up enough uh, and realize that God, amen, is watching over his church. God help me today to understand that you are wanting to birth something inside of your church today. Amen. So we understand, don't let anything take your praise, and you can praise anywhere when you realize whose you are. If you are a bride of Christ, listen to me today, if you are a bride of Christ, then that means that you took upon his name at an old-fashioned altar. If you have never taken upon the, the name of Jesus at an old-fashioned altar called repentance, then I encourage you today to find a place before you leave Amen. And find an altar. What is an altar? An altar is your chair. An altar is the very position you're standing in or standing in. That you come to the understanding that without Christ, I am lost. Hallelujah. His name, amen, is, is found, birthed, and stamped inside of these human vessels. He created you and I for the very purpose. The very name of Isaiah, I thought this was pretty interesting, that the very name of Isaiah means Jehovah is salvation. So when Isaiah begins to speak to the children of Israel, their ears begin to perk up because they knew there was something about the words of Isaiah, amen, had a little weight to it. He was not somebody that was just spending time and just preaching a pretty little sermon but God was speaking through him. God, help us today to be a church that has an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say. We do not need another pretty sermon. We don't need more beautiful buildings. What we need is an ear to hear and a voice to speak and a heart to receive what thus saith the word of the Lord. God is wanting and desiring to birth something so miraculous that this earth and world and church has never seen before. Isaiah penned some words in Isaiah 66, and it's left many people trying to figure out what in the world was Isaiah the prophet trying to speak in Isaiah 66. In Isaiah 66, verse 7 through 14, we find where Isaiah begins to speak words. And this is where the Spirit led me into Scripture. And I hope to pray that you can understand what He is wanting to speak and to tell us today. He starts off and He says, Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before she began to travail, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? How those ladies, mothers that are here today, amen, you understand that there is, there is a process of birthing. And a lot of times there is a lot of um, discomfort. <laughs> There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of, uh, of, of bodily uh Changes going on at this at this particular time, but Isaiah the prophet is talking to the children of Israel, and he's telling them that before the pain even got there, before that there was ever travail that had ever hit you, there was babies being born and children was being birthed. I come to declare to you today that Zion is about to begin to bring forth a birth. And the birth is going to proceed before much travail, before much pain, before much discomfort. Oh, hallelujah. If you're in the church today, you ought to get excited because God is sending a word to you today that Zion is about to, to, be, to begin to bring a great birth into the church. He went on and says, shall I bring the birth and not cause uh, and not cause to bring forth? Have I allowed this impregnation, the, the signs of that you are with child? The church is with child, with expectation. It is, it is carrying promises. 
is carrying something within his womb. And God has sent these eight weeks trying to get the church to get into position to now begin to push forth and birth something in the spirit that we have never seen before. Amen. Amen. I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. Then he went on. He said, Rejoice ye with Jerusalem. Be glad with her, all you that love her. Anybody still in love with a mother called what mother place called Jerusalem. Whether you realize it or not, but Jerusalem is our Zion. Jerusalem is our birthplace. It is where a lot of things transpired in Jerusalem. And he said, Jerusalem, be glad with her. All you that love her, rejoice for joy with her. All you that mourn for her. I want to preach once again this simple little thought to you today. And I pray that it gets down in your spirit. And that it truly does what God sent for when Zion gives birth. Amen. Look at your neighbor telling Zion is about to give birth. When the Bible speaks of Zion, it is referring to Jerusalem. Zion or Jerusalem is Israel's mother and its birthplace where the promises were that I will make you into a great nation. It is there we see the unfolding of a promise to where that a great nation was going to be born. Matter of fact, we find in the New Testament, in 1 Peter 2 and 9, it says this, to help you to understand the people that God is causing, who God is going to birth. He said in 1 Peter 2 and 9, says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Can I tell you today, God is not birthing just any old thing that looks like everything else. God is birthing something in this hour that's going to stand out. It's going to be different. It's going to look different. It's going to speak different. It's going to act different. I come to tell you today that Zion is about to birth something. Old Mother Zion is about to birth something back into the church and to the children of God that we've never seen before. Many great things were birthed out of Zion. What were some of the things that God birthed out of Zion? God robed himself in flesh and was birthed in a little town called Bethlehem. And out of Zion came our Savior. The angel of the Lord stood and proclaimed and called, told them to call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He called out of Zion. God poured out his spirit upon 120 believers who gathered into an upper room, but was found there in a place called Zion. Something great was birthed out of Zion there in Jerusalem. Jesus returned to Zion and gave his life, and there his blood gave birth to his church. So I understand that Zion has always been a very important place that the church can trace its roots back to a place called Zion. Zion is still a birthing place for something miraculous. We understand that even in days to come, as time begins to go on, there's going to be another day where Zion will once again begin to reveal some purpose and some plans of what he's got designed, designed for the future. Keep your eyes on Israel. Keep your eyes over across the sea in a place called Zion. Because Zion is still very important and is very interested in what happens with Zion. <coughs> Hallelujah. In my prayer, I felt very extremely impressed to preach to us today about the church and that the church is the mother, but her role as a mother should always be producing children. Stay with me for just a moment. I know it's a little bit different Mother's Day message. But if you will listen to Pastor today, I believe the Lord is going to allow something to be birthed into the body of believers and those that are here today. 
The Bible gives us the revelation that we are the bride of Christ. If we are the bride of Christ, then that means that Jesus is the groom. And we understand that whatever relationship between groom and bride, there should always be an offspring. There should be something when a bride and a groom gets together. Amen. I hope you hear it, Pastor, today. I'm grateful to all of our mothers that are here today, and we honor you. But I want us to go a little bit deeper into the depth of where motherhood was birthed into the spiritual realm. Amen. We honor our physical mothers, but there's also a spiritual mother that I want us to focus in today. And I don't know why God has me here other than to let us understand that we need to make sure that mother is healthy. Mother, amen, is ready and prepared to give birth to what's about to be giving back to the church. But I preach to us the importance of turning our eyes spiritually, amen, as a mother, the church, and that we begin to get ourselves in position to be able to birth the greatest revival that this world has ever seen. For in the Bible it says, in the last day, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I believe that we are on the threshold of something so miraculous that we are going to see the birth of the end time revival in this generation. Somebody needs to get excited because you're going to be part of, of what God is going to birth. I'm talking about understanding that we, the church, amen, has become the modern day Zion. We are to be birthing and we should be honoring, amen, and identifying that there is a spiritual mother that needs to be healthy, that needs to be prepared, amen. Those of you that are here today, our mothers, you can say this a whole lot better than I can, but we understand when you find out Amen. That you are carrying with a child. You have to start beginning to prepare yourself. You have to change the diet. You have to do certain things. And you cannot do certain things. And because you want to make sure you protect what's in the womb. Somewhere, somehow, we have got to get back to the place that the importance of what God has got or what God has placed in the womb of the church. It must be protected. It must be prayed over. It must have some times where, amen, we begin to separate ourselves from some things. Hallelujah. God has placed his seed, which we know is the word of God within his bride, the church. And we should be expecting a delivery any day. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I've been feeling the anxiousness of the spirit as it begins to it begins to just get stronger. And I begin beginning to feel the glory of God's presence drawing us into a deeper place with him. My wife said the other day that it seems like when I go to get down to pray and to seek after the Lord, it seems like God's presence is already there just waiting on us. Waiting for us to entertain his presence. Why? Because God is preparing the church for one of the greatest outpouring of his glory that we have ever seen or felt before. The Bible tells us that we are his offspring. And that if we are his offspring, we should be producing the same as he did. The mother, the church, Zion should also be producing for as sheep beget sheep, then we should be begetting who we are. God help us. <laughs> Amen. To birth what God has intended us to birth. Acts 17 and 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own prophets have said, we were all and are of his offspring. Let me ask you something today. Our question is, do we desire the things of the flesh or do we desire the things of the spirit? 
Because we understand that if we only desire the things of the flesh, then the spiritual things are going to suffer. The Lord took me to a, a place where, amen, in Genesis chapter 30, verse 1, and most of us, we know the story. Because we understand barrenness is something that it's a, uh, it's a personal problem and it must be taken seriously when there is barrenness. God never intended his church to be barren. Oh, hallelujah. Either this is some mighty good preaching or y'all looking at me like, what is he talking about? Amen. This is the last time we'll do a chord, I can tell you that. Look, I can't move up here, Sister Peanut. Hallelujah. But I come to tell somebody today, God is about to do something with this church, which we know is the mother, and I'm talking about Zion because out of Zion, there became something that became the greatest thing that's ever walked, and he still carries the name as the Lord of Lords. And the King of Kings, he's the Alpha, the Omega, that same one who came out of Zion on that wonderful day when Mary gave birth to a, ch a child that was in Bethlehem in a small little manger. That same God is still looking for a vessel that he can pour his glory through and birth something that's miraculous. Barriness is something that God is not in. God never intended his church to be a barrenless church, be a barren church. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a hunger that many of our mothers that are here today, amen, understand that you have a desire to give a child or to produce a child. I can remember when my wife and I got married and, and uh, two years, over two years after we were married, it, it seemed like she really wanted to have a child that we were unable to have. And we went to a church there in New Orleans and, and went there with uh, our, my wife's oldest brother and, and uh, wasn't even there for ourselves. And the minister came and called my wife out and began to look at her and tell her, said, you have a fear of having children. And I, I knew that somewhere, somehow, the Lord had been speaking and I knew that this was not something that man just made up, but I knew that God was speaking. He asked my wife to stand and he asked her, would you like for God to fulfill the desires of your heart so you can hold it in your arms? And at that time, I began to weep as you, it's so hard for me to do, but believe it or not, I started weeping. And my wife started weeping and it was only just a couple of months later we found out that she was pregnant because God wants us to understand that that same hunger, the same desire that my wife had to produce a child, to give her husband, to give her groom a, a child that he could call of his own, that same desire and burden should be being birthed and felt inside of every God-filled, fearing believer. Amen. That we should want and desire to produce something for the groom that's coming back for his bride. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be bearless. I do not want to be barren and not able to produce anything. But I want to be a part of the church. I want to be a part of Zion that brings forth something great that God can use. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We find one lady, amen, in the Bible in Genesis chapter 30 and verse 1, who was so desperate, who had got to the point and the place to where that after her marriage to her husband Jacob, it wasn't long that she discovered that she was barren. And she made a statement, amen, that got a hold of me when God's Spirit began to lead me to the scripture. And he, she said, now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said, Jacob, give me children or else I die. Oh my God, I wish to the good Lord that the church that's up on the face of the earth could get that same kind of mentality and attitude towards 
birthing some spiritual children in the church today and that we would have that attitude. Amen. Give me children or lest we die. P-O-L-C, we cannot go another service. We cannot go another week. We cannot go another year without seeing babies born. Because when babies are born, there's something about the laughter of a child. There's something about the cute voice of that little voice ringing throughout the night. Amen. That brings excitement back into the home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, help us to have that same type of attitude towards Zion, amen, as, as Rachel had towards her husband Jacob. God, I don't want to be a part of a church who is barren, that is not producing children for the glory and the purpose of the Lord. For thy name's sake, O oh God, place in us the seed of expectation. Oh God, help us today. Help us today to understand. I'm talking about mothers today. I'm honoring the mother, which we know, amen, God has established the church. Give us children, O oh God. Nothing else, God, will satisfy us unless we are, amen, producing children. Church, I'm just going to be honest with you. I really believe that this has been a time of these eight weeks of being... Uh, going through what our world has been going through for the last eight weeks. I really do believe that God has really been trying to help, amen, the church to prepare itself personally. Because the church, once again, is not a, a, a body. The church is not just a group of people. The church is established in the hearts of every man and woman that has been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God is wanting, desiring to get his church, Zion, ready to produce something that we've never seen before. I want to encourage every person that's here today that you can birth spiritual babies because when it comes spiritually, you're not missing anything. You say it again. We might, be, we might have complications of why we cannot produce many children. But when it comes in the spirit, you are not limited in anything when it comes to the supernatural. Amen. God has a word for us today that he will birth something through you, but you have to have the want to. You have to put yourself into position to where God can and will produce. Your praise. Amen. Because he told him, he said, if you would understand, there's something about your praise that attracts the presence of God. Something begins to happen. How many of us has ever begin to worship and magnify God in the midst of a storm or trouble or circumstance? And when you begin to worship, there's something begins to wake up inside of you. And the glory of God begins to be activated. And joy comes back. And peace comes back. Why? Because the presence of God is now coming back inside of a thirsty soul that is hungry and thirsty for a touch from the master. And if I can just get you to wake up your praise today, if I can get you to just start worshiping today, God will, God will put something inside that will wake up some, the seed of expectation. Your praise Amen. It's about to activate the seed of promise that's in your womb. Amen. I'm coming to a close. Here's what Isaiah 54 said. Isaiah once again begins to talk to the people and begin to tell them. And here's what I feel that God began to lead me to in the scripture. And I believe this for a word for the POC church body. Amen. I pray that somebody will grab a hold to this word. Isaiah 54 he begins to proclaim to the church. He said, Sing, O barren one, if you have not produced a child, if you have not done anything that you felt that was worth, worthy given to God. He says to you and to I here today, start singing if you feel like you have been barren. You who did not bear. He's pointing us out today 
that if anybody has been barren, start singing. Because I'm about, here's what he said, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who do not travail with trial, with child. For the spiritual children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. The focus is not on the natural, but it's on the supernatural. What you are limited in the natural, you are unlimited in the supernatural. Oh, God, help me. Because I want you to understand God truly is wanting to do something that this world has never seen. There comes a time, brothers and sisters, to where you understand that this time and the season has brought us to the next season. And the season you and I have been walking in and, walk, and trying to walk through, though difficult it has been, but it has not been a wasted season. There's a moment when there is a... God help me today not to say anything that's going to offend nobody, but there comes a time when there, there, there's a seed that is deposited. And you have to wait a little time before you find what you've been carrying is about to give birth and it's going to have a voice of its own. God is about to show you and reveal to us that we have been walking these eight weeks. Nine weeks. Could it be that nine weeks could equal to nine months of carrying the child that's in the womb? Could it be next Sunday the tent will be gone, but we're walking back in this building next Sunday? Could it be that the nine weeks was just the preparation for a nine-month delivery that we're about to deliver? My God, I feel that. We're about to see something that we've never seen before. We're going to see people born again of the water and the spirit. Why? Because Zion has finally woke up. Zion has finally understood. Zion was created to give birth. Zion was created to produce something. We were never meant to be barren. We were meant to produce. Oh, God, help us today. Hallelujah. Next Sunday, we will walk back in the doors of the church. And you can come and you can be part of it. I don't know what they're going to do or what they're going to say. But I refuse, amen, to stay out, of, out, out from a place of bearing and not produce something that God has been, produce, that has been preparing us for. Amen. Nine weeks. It will be nine weeks since we walked into that building. And I'm praying that these nine weeks has just prepared us spiritually. That's why you've been separated. That's why you had to go to the wilderness for yourself. That's why you had to go and get along with God. I told you a few weeks ago, it's a personal altar. And it's a family altar you got to have established in your life. Why? Because God is trying to get you in, individually, amen, strong enough to produce something. God's trying to tell you that there's about to be a travail. There's about to be a push. If you don't kill your bear and your lion, you're not going to be able to destroy the Goliath that's in front of you. I'm telling you, God is about to birth something, but he's going to do it through a church called Zion. It's where he birthed this thing. This is God's church. It's always been God's church. Hallelujah, you're part of God's body. Here's what he said. As Isaiah continued to give direction on what the barren should do, he said, break out and sing and cry out aloud. But here's the word for the Lord for somebody here today and for the church, whoever will grab a hold of this. He said, he began to tell them, start preparing. He said in verse 2, he said, this is what you do. I'm so glad God saved this message for this very moment that we're in right now. Thank you, Lord, for not giving me this message three weeks ago, a month ago. Because here's what he said. He said, when you start singing, when 
you start crying out aloud. He said, then your next step is start enlarging the place of your tent. And let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. He said, spare not. Don't live it, but don't spare anything. Go all in. Get ready. Get in position. Get to the point where you're about to burst something that you've been carrying for nine weeks. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, P-O-L-C, for you will spread abroad to the right hand and to the left hand, and your offspring will process, will possess a nation. Oh, God. And your offspring will possess the nation and make the desolate city to be inhabited. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. Let's stand. I want you to receive this word for you right now. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, neither be confounded or depressed. For you shall not be put to shame. For you shall forget the shame of your youth, and you shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Ha! Ah. That barren place that you've had to walk through, that barren place where you felt that the presence of God had 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 uh, had, uh, had escaped from you, the absent from you. You thought that the presence of God could never walk back into that barren place where you've been living. I come to tell you today, today is your day. God is about to bring something back into Zion. God's about to burst something back into the church. God is going to pregnant the church with a supernatural glory and power of trust and faith like we've never seen before. He went on to verse 5 and he said, For your maker, listen, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth. He is called want to know why that our whole world for the first time in my generation the whole world has been affected and has come to a standstill the whole world not Moronta, not Louisiana, not the United States of America, but the whole world has come to a standstill because the husband the God of the whole earth he is called has called us to get back to the place to where Zion get ready because there's about to be a birth. Do you realize that Israel is seen as the Lord's wife? He talked about it throughout the scripture. But here's the hope for you and I. Because he came to his own, his own receiving not. He allowed you and he allowed me to be a part of his family. And what he said, the bride that I created for me rejected me. I'm going to go look for another bride. And he's here today looking for a new bride so that he can deposit, amen, something that is so miraculous. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken, grieved in spirit, and heart sore, even a wife in youth, when she is later refused and scorned, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion and mercy I will gather you into me again. This could be your day that everything comes back. I know this has been a different message, but I come to tell you, I know what the Lord speaks to me. There is something that God is going to put back where He where you thought that He was gone forever. God's telling you, I got something for you today. He said, I know it's just for a little while. Here's what he said in verse 8. In just a little burst of wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with age enduring love. But with age enduring love. God have mercy. Age enduring love. Do you understand what he's saying to you today? It's that same love that I hold on the cross. It's the same enduring love that I'm reaching for you again 
today. Zion, I, I, I want to love on you, Zion. And I will have compassion and mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. I know that everybody's trying to find out where is God in all this COVID-19. But I believe, I believe that he has been preserved. Per, per, I believe he's been preparing Zion. So that he can birth something in this last day that was prophesied by the prophet Joel in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, says the Lord. And I close with this. Isaiah 55, verse 12. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing because of you. And all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress tree. And instead of the, bear, the briar shall come forth the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not ever be cut off. Brothers and sisters, when Zion gives birth, I don't know about you, but the Bible did prophesy, and he did say that in the last day, I will pour out of my spirit and the latter rain shall be greater than the former. Do you want to be a part of the mother, Zion, the church that produces this end time revival that will sweep across this nation, this world, so that once again Zion will be held and made so valuable because that's the place where you were birthed. Amen. Heavenly Father, today I understand that we're living in a moment and a place to where that there's so many things, God, that is that is demanding our attention, trying to call us away, God, and attract us, God, from the true source of what you established your church for and what Zion was built and created for. God sitting underneath this tent, oh Lord God, is precious, wonderful people. Oh, my love and appreciate we're gathered here with our mothers today. And God, we're here to honor them and show our love and respect for them. But God, we pause on this Sunday afternoon. God, I know this has been a different sermon. It's been a different word, God, that Jesus that you sit here today. But I know, God, that you are about to choose to do something to the mother called the church. And Zion, God, is about to produce and flow, God, to Jesus with spiritual children. So, God, I pause on this Sunday morning as we honor our, our physical mothers. I also thank you for my spiritual mother. I thank you, God, for that spiritual place, God, where something was birthed in my life. Hallelujah. Could you just lift up your hands right now? And could you begin to give God thanks for that day that he birthed his spirit in you? Hallelujah. Can we just thank God for Zion for just a moment? Can we just thank God that he gave us a place to where that Zion birthed something in us? It wasn't a falsehood. It was not something that was just a one-time event. But God gave us his spirit. Let's worship us.